Did Jesus exist? And further on that, did he actually perform miracles? Dr. Richard Dawkins isn't convinced, and on Joe Rogan's podcast, he said this. Do you, you, so you do think he was a real person? Most of the scholars I've talked to say he probably was. The evidence is not great, of course, but I think, um, I don't think it's that big a deal, actually, because he, I mean, a wandering preacher called Yeshua or Yehoshua, would it not be surprising? I mean, it's a common name, right. uh, and uh, there are plenty of wandering preachers. What would be very surprising would be if he raised uh, Lazarus from the dead and walked right. on water and turned water into wine. And that, of course, didn't, did not happen. So Dawkins doesn't seem totally sure if Jesus existed, which is pretty interesting considering even famous atheists like Bart Ehrman uh, affirm that Jesus undeniably existed, the Jesus of the Bible, because there are so many sources corroborating, corroborating, I don't even know how to say that word, Corrobor <laughs> I don't even know how to, anyway, you know what word I'm talking about, corroborating, corroborating. Even though there are so many sources pointing to the fact that the Jesus of the Bible actually existed, he's not too convinced in that, but he is absolutely sure that he didn't commit any miracles. He didn't, he didn't perform any miracles at all. He knows that for sure because he was there. I don't, I don't, I doubt it, but just because he knows, you know, he's Richard Dawkins after all. You know, for Richard Dawkins, his worldview consists of the natural world. Um, there's no supernatural that can, no supernatural things can happen within his worldview. It's all naturalistic, materialistic, atheistic. That leaves no room for anything beyond the material, the natural world. But there's a big problem to that. There are certain things that we can't account for in the material world. One example is love. What is love? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I should start saying, what is love? Um, Sure. Like sometimes, yeah, yeah, it does have, um, you know, physiological impact when somebody is in love, you know, their heartbeat can go faster. Maybe they start sweating, um, that kind of thing. But you can't test for the amount of love that a person has. You can't run scientific tests um, if you are in love or what degree of love that you have or, or whether you've fallen out of love. Like it's not something you can test for. That's something we can't quantify within the natural world. And yet we all acknowledge that love exists. Some people will claim that it is our primary objective as humans is to love one another. Well, how can we love people if we don't even, if we consist in a worldview that can't even ca account for love because love is beyond what is material, what is in the natural world. It is something of the supernatural, something beyond what we can test for. You know, even beyond that, God said that he would use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And Richard Dawkins sees miracles as foolish. I mean, a lot of people do. They see these things that in the Bible as fairy tales, as myths, as things that are, how, how could any intellectual believe those things? No, obviously we can't run tests to see why miracles or how miracles took place. That's where faith comes in. But even then, I'd argue that it's not a blind faith. You know, you see, there, there were eyewitnesses in Jesus' time watching these miracles take place. One of the greatest ones is the resurrection, obviously. And they testify and they wrote down what they had seen. And these are not just his followers. Uh, one of the greatest examples of that is Josephus. So it would be incorrect to say that there is no evidence for Jesus existence or even his miracles and his resurrection because there's plenty of evidence. But what I've found with people like Richard Dawkins, like other people that take on this kind of very uh, vigilant and aggressive atheistic worldview is they don't care about the evidence because they don't want to believe in God. You know, you, you begin talking with somebody that claims to be an atheist and you start giving them evidence and, and they kind of recoil with, well, even if God did exist, I wouldn't want to worship a God like that. I, you know, that God is evil. That God is hateful. That God is bigoted. And you begin to see that it's not um, their intellect that's stopping them. Some people, it is, right? They, they've kind of put a foothold in, in uh, uh, you know, what, if I can't process it, if I can't figure it out, if I don't 
feel like I have enough evidence and I'm not going to believe it. But there's other people that are legitimately angry at God. And in those instances, it's not just our job as Christians to continue to pour out evidence for them and, and hope that they would believe, but rather, honestly, turn to our most powerful weapon, which is prayer, which is his scriptures, and pray that they would their eyes would be open to see because ultimately this is a act of God that needs to happen. People's eyes need to be open to see him and God needs to give them faith to see themselves as they truly are. It's not an easy thing to acknowledge that you are sinful and you're broken. And that's only through Jesus conviction, the conviction that happens through God, the Holy Spirit in our lives that we can begin to see, okay, look, I've sinned. I, I need Jesus. And he breaks down our walls and, and he breaks down our hard heart because that's what we have. We have a hard heart that is full of pride. But in James, it says that God gives law to the proud, but grace to the humble. And we got to ask that God would open these people's eyes to see themselves as they truly are and see him as the good father that he truly is. Yes, there's plenty of evidence for Jesus, his miracles, his resurrection. But at the end of the day, we're called to put our faith in Jesus. In John 20, Jesus said this, Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can give it a like down below and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos every single day. If you want to help support what I'm doing here with my ministry, um, the link in my bio will take you to Patreon. Uh, it's the way that people help this ministry keep going and growing. I would so appreciate your partnership in this mission. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you next time. God bless.